But generally, the powers that really wield the power are closer to the people, clad not in royal ermine, but in the discreet pinstripe of the politician. Such a bland wielder of power was Britain's Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin, wielding powers of argument, powers of persuasion, powers of sweet reason. I've served in many governments, and I assert without hesitation and without fear of contradiction that what has been accomplished in the last four years could not have been done by any party government, whatever it was, and however strong it was in the House of Commons. Another familiar face, Britain's Premier during the First World War, Lloyd George. The next question is peace. Without real peace in the world, all progress is impossible. Peace is imperiled by the growth of armaments in every country, including ours. I counsel you to vote only for candidates who will insist that the government of the day, before they proceed to increase the huge armament bill that we've got now, shall summon a conference of all the nations of the world to talk over the international situation and secure an all-around reduction in armament. Peace, the plea and prayer of all statesmen in the 30s. The pulpit, the League of Nations. Its priests, the Lavals, the Grandes, the Briands. This is Samuel Hawes. I'm off to Geneva to help Mr. Eden and Monsieur Laval and the members of the League in their work for peace. We are all out for peace. We are all out for carrying out our obligations under the League. They're not just up and coming, but already there, Anthony Eden, the no very model of a British Foreign Minister. We know we are destined in our land and in our generation to live in a period of emergency of which no one can see. Yes, the League set the Swiss mountains reverberating to many a noble phrase. And few were nobler than those of Mr. Ramsay MacDonald. The armed nations must be prepared to make their contribution in disarmament. The disarmed nation wants justice and freedom. <laughs> and a German pure and simple would be the most heart-breaking confession of failure that this conscience uh, could indulge. Prayers for peace and pleas for economic security. The time of the underprivileged, not only in primitive societies, but also in the so-called civilized. In London's Hyde Park, George Lansbury. You've balanced the budget. You've cut down the war debt. You've done no end of wonderful things. And trade still bad, still three, three million People out of work. Yet political strife was not without its lighter side. Herbert Morrison lays a foundation stone. I have just received an indication of two threats. One is that I am to be reported to the Bricklayers Union for having done a job without a card. And the other is that they're going to tell Winston Churchill about it. <laughs> Powers is yet on the sidelines. Other powers, detached from the political dogfight, yet swaying opinion by their ideas. Mr. Welch, have you any uh, uh, solution for the very unhappy state of affairs that uh, is facing the world today? It seems to me we have increased the productivity of our social, of our economic organization so greatly that 
a smaller and smaller proportion of people can produce everything that we need. The consequence is that a larger and larger number of people are being forced out of employment and are unable to consume. Lady Astor, arriving in New York. Lady Astor, what about your trip to Russia? Tell us some of your... You know, it was very interesting. Very interesting. I, I, I never was a communist, and I don't believe it will succeed. But I believe that uh, the way to help the world and to help Russia to come out of communism is for the rest of the world to trade with us. I, 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 I think that's what we ought to do, and I think that's what we will do sooner or later. When is uh, Bernard Shaw coming to America? He's frightened. He's, he's frightened of coming to America. I'm longing to have him come because you'd like him. He'd be very insulting and very amusing. The really, the best thing about Bernard Shaw is his heart. He's a heart of gold. Well, they got their wish. Yet the first time, he did little but introduce himself. I simply say that uh, I can't say that I'm very glad to see you because I can't see you. Uh, but I feel instinctively that you're extremely glad to see me. They're always glad to see me in America. So now, uh, take a good look at me, because I am the actual, real, original Bernard Shaw. And, uh, now, how do you like me? <laughs> <laughs> what? No more wisdom, Mr. Shaw. You have to go. Oh, such a pity. For you were indeed a man who understood and employed words. So, next time, please, Mr. Shaw, more words. <laughs> <laughs>